Hi, it's Saturday morning, September 9th. Here's Hurricane Irma centered just on the northern coast of central Cuba or just off the coast. It has been moving right along the northern part of the island throughout last night and this morning, continuing to rake Cuba with the southern eye wall. This has surely brought devastating weather to many places along northern Cuba, and we do hope that everyone is safe. The impact of this development in the track overnight is that the storm has been close enough to the Cuban landmass to become weakened. And you can see that because the eye has become filled with murky clouds and we've seen a chunk taken out of the thunderstorms on the western side. There's not a lot of deep convection here. This is all due to the fact that when you're close to the island like this, you're cutting off a lot of moisture supply from the underlying ocean because this island is obviously land, not ocean and there's mountainous terrain here that disrupts the circulation. However, the weakening has not been drastic, and it's important to realize this. The recon date is in there, the pressure's up to 940, and still rising for the moment. This is still a major hurricane with winds of at least Category 3, if not Category 4 force, and the NHC has brought the winds down to 130 miles per hour, and they could, down, could go down a little bit more in the short term. However, this is still a problem because normally if you have a hurricane that's tracking right over Cuba, say over the central part of Cuba for as long as Irma has been near the northern coast, if it was further inland than this, it would come off and it would normally take a full day to recover once it's back over water. However, with Irma, we see that the core remains largely intact here. The eye has not moved fully inland, only part of the eye wall has moved over land, and this is likely to remain the case as the hurricane skirts the coast prior to moving northwest towards southwest Florida. As a result, the core has integrity, and that means that it is likely to recover more immediately when it moves out over the water here, as it will start gaining distance from Cuba and could have up to 12 full hours over the warm water near the Florida Keys, and this could allow re-strengthening, and the storm could recover much of the strength that it lost last night. So we're going to be watching for that. We could see re-strengthening, and keep in mind, even if we don't see any recovery of the storm's strength, this remains extraordinarily dangerous. This is a very large wind field. If you look at the radar out of Key West this morning, here's the eye moving up along the Cuban coast. You can see the outer bands affecting South Florida. These have already brought wind gusts of over 50 and 60 miles per hour to places like Miami, Key West, the Florida Keys, already seeing dangerous winds coming ashore here. And you can see how large this is. The core is still perhaps a full 12 to 24 hours away from impacting anyone in the Keys in South Florida. And we're already getting these dangerous winds well in excess of tropical storm force. And hurricane force gusts will not be far behind in the second round of banding that will be coming north later today and tonight. So you, time is running out and uh, you better not be in the Keys. This is a bad place to be. You do not want to be in the Keys. And if you're in a surge zone anywhere in Florida, anywhere in Florida, if you're in a, in a zone that's prone to storm surge, you need to get out of it. Storm surge is the most life-threatening impact from these storms. Do not be stuck in an, ac in an evacuation zone. Follow your evacuation orders if they've been given to you. Flood inundation potential from storm surge is available on maps at hurricanes.gov, and you can see what risk your location is for storm surge inundation above ground level. As we continue to watch Irma, it will move west-northwest, continuing today, eventually moving off the Cuban coast by late tonight, and the core of the hurricane will be impacting the Florida Keys overnight and into Sunday morning and southwestern Florida after that. Again, this is a large storm, so even though the exact path of the eye is near southwest Florida and the Keys, there are hurricane warnings up all along the east coast of Florida, and places like Miami and all the way up the coast are going to see wind gusts over hurricane force most likely, and as the system turns up, the core of the hurricane will be passing by places like Naples, Fort Myers, Port Charlotte, Tampa, and Tampa Bay is a bad place for surge too. Make sure you're out of a surge zone. Do not be in a place that could be flooded. Make sure you're riding this out in a sturdy structure and uh, be away from the water. Water's the biggest problem. As this comes up the coast, you can see this is still a major hurricane here, strong winds. And the problem now is that as the system is moving a little bit farther to the west, it has a little more time before it actually moves inland over the Florida Peninsula, and it doesn't even move that far inland until it gets all the way north here into Georgia. So we could see this all still a major hurricane near Tampa Bay, and hurricane force winds now could penetrate quite far into North Florida. You can see hurricane watches extend now into the Florida Panhandle, including inland counties and places like Tallahassee could easily see hurricane force winds from this track, and power outages are going to be a big problem over this part of the country. Make sure you're ready for that. Make sure you're prepared for days without power here. 
as this moves up into Georgia, the wind threat will decrease and winds will likely decrease below hurricane force, although you could see hurricane force winds into southern Georgia given the track now is closer to water up until the Florida panhandle. But once you get farther inland, don't let the wind threat uh, make you feel at ease. Power outages are still likely here over a wide area as wind gusts over tropical storm force can easily knock down trees and power lines and can be a danger. So make sure you're ready for that. Heavy rain and the potential for tornadoes on the right hand side are possible in this region of the country. And don't focus on just the cone here. You can see that the cone is this. This is just for tracking the eye of the hurricane. Forget the cone now. Just forget the cone. What matters is that the storm is large. You can see the wind field here. See this? See how big this is? That circle. It encompasses Florida and it's going to extend outside the cone. Impacts here will extend over a large region of the southeastern U.S. Don't take this lightly just because it is going to be weaker in terms of wind. We are going to see the potential for storm surge impacts even along the northeast Florida and Georgia coastlines and heavy rain tornadoes and gusty winds that can take down power lines are going to be threats well inland as this moves north. So do take this seriously and please take proper precautions. We're going to continue to track this storm again along the coast of Cuba today. Some restrengthening possible when it moves over the water towards southwest Florida later tonight. So don't let your guard down. This is, remains an extremely dangerous storm. Be safe, everyone. I'll have another update later today. That's it for, for now. Thanks for watching.